This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. In this week's episode of Nikon's Birding Adventures, we're taking you to Honduras for part two of our birding adventure in this avian rich country. Honduras has some of the most untouched wilderness in all of Central America and it also has some fascinating birds. Join us this week as we go in quest of our golden bird, the resplendent Quetzal. Let's go birding. Majestic jaguars and diminutive margays roam vast, pristine tropical rainforests amongst lost cities and Mayan ruins. Immense forested mountains rise from sea level to 8,000 feet. Expansive mangroves are home to countless water birds, monkeys and manatees. Here is a tropical paradise of crystalline rivers, expansive beaches and the most pristine coral reefs in the Americas. All of this and nearly 750 spectacular bird species make the country of Honduras one of the most scenic and sought after birding destinations in all of Central America. Long awaiting discovery by the world's tropical birders, today this Central American country of little more than 43,000 square miles enjoys a steadily increasing avi-tourism presence. Honduras boasts more than 8,500 square miles of protected areas and national parks, and the hope is that through avi-tourism, this number can be sustained or even grown in the future. The approximately 750 bird species in Honduras range from the magnificent electric blue lovely Katinga to the massive and regal Harpy Eagle and to the diminutive and endemic Honduran Emerald. With over 70 raptor species, over 40 hummingbird species, 8 trogons and 7 motmots, this country has some of the most charismatic birds waiting to be discovered by visiting birders. The Honduras Birding for Conservation Tour has been designed to further the growth in avi-tourism and the protection of Honduran birds and their habitat. The world's biggest leaders in bird watching and bird conservation and local Honduran bird guides lead groups of enthusiastic participants in a relaxed birding tour to reveal some of the best birding that Honduras has to offer. We got to spend some time with two of the very best guides in Honduras, William Oriana and Oblin Bejarano. It's really good to have you here at the Panacam Park today. It's just super to have people from all over the world coming and visiting us and getting to know the hidden treasure that we have here in Honduras, which is birding. There are few birds that are more emblematic of the neotropics than the toucans and the arasaris or the ramfastids. And today we're at Panacam Lodge. This is in the Cerro Azul Mountains or the Blue Mountains. And this place has got a really, really nice tower. And it's the top of this tower where you can see a lot of these toucanets, arasaris and toucans. There are five species of toucans, toucanets and arasaris in Honduras and we've been very fortunate this morning at Panacam to get three of those five species. 
We've had the keel bill toucan with that bright banana shaped bill. And when it's flying, it almost looks as though the bird's following its bill. Its bill is, you know, almost half the length of the body. And then we've also had the beautiful collared arasaris as well. These are smaller sort of toucans with these nice big bills, very, very bright colors. And then we've been very lucky here to get the brilliantly colored emerald toucanette as well. Well, we've had a very productive morning at the tower at Panacam. We're now gonna head down and start birding amongst the cabins because right amongst the cabins is some very good birding. It's on the fringes of the primary sort of forest here and there's a lot of secondary growth and this is where we get a lot of good species coming down to that secondary growth as well. Oh, beautiful red Passerini tanager. That's one of the largest species of tanager here. Bright crimson red. Stunning bird, very common over much of Central America. And in the same tree, we've got golden hooded tanagers as well. In fact, no, they just, just hopped into the other tree over there. Golden hooded tanager. Very beautiful tanager with a nice sort of golden head and then beautiful blue body. Well, we've had a pretty productive morning birding around the cabins. We've had oropendulas. We also had some nice white-bellied emeralds feeding in the flowers. Panacam Park, the Blue Mountain National Park, is really an exciting place. I think it's a place to visit and we're excited that you're here. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917. And by Honduras, we're all about you. And by Hobie Mirage Drive Kayaks, enjoy nature effortlessly. The Lodge of Pico Bonito where we are is uh, named what it's named because we are at the very edge of Pico Bonito National Park. Uh, here on the north coast of Honduras. We're at the foothills of mountains that go almost from sea level all the way up to just about 8,000 feet, and the park itself comprises just about a quarter million acres of rainforest, rivers, cascading waterfalls, cloud forest, palm forest, all sorts of different habitats. It's a very immense, wild, unexplored area. Our lodge is 400 acres on the edge of all of this, and miles and miles and miles and miles of trails that go in and out of this rainforest. This is Pico Benito National Park. Close to 480 species of birds have been recorded in this magnificent park. To give you an idea, this mountain range is called the Nombre de Dios mountain range and it's the third highest peak in Honduras. With this high peak up to 8,000 feet in elevation comes all these different elevations of forest where you can find a treasure trove of avian delights. Let's go exploring. It's early morning and we're at the Toucan Tower in Pico Benito National Park. And this tower should really be called the lovely Katinga Tower because this place is without doubt the very best location on planet Earth to see the lovely Katinga. Got a stunning male lovely Katinga perched right up on top of one of the trees here just next to the Coloradito River. The scenery is spectacular here. We've got the roaring river below us and we've got all these tall gallery trees and we've got an amazing vista over all the gallery trees here. These lovely Katingas at certain times of the year come down in nice numbers here. And in fact, you've seen, I think, 18 in one tree or something yes, at one, one time. Sometimes it's too many Katingas and you can see some tree like a Christmas tree, but with Katingas. This is something amazing. Wow, what a stunning bird, huh? It really is beautiful. That bright, bright blue. 
and the female is very different looking. The female is quite drab in plumage and it's a great example of really severe sexual dimorphism in these birds. The male's bright, bright blue and the female's very drab. The lovely Katinga is somewhat of a mystery because very little is known about its life history and its habits. For example, there has never ever been a nest found of this bird in the whole of Honduras. And so very little is known at some times of the year it's a high elevation species and then at other times of the year it comes down in quite big numbers right down to about 500, 600 feet above sea level. If it wasn't for their bright colors they would be very, very unassuming because they have a very soft voice. It's almost inaudible. And so you really have to be at a spot like this Toucan Tower with a great vista over all the canopy trees to even see this bird. Yes, well, that was a lifer for me. Lovely Katinga. Well Thanks done, so my fun. friend. That's awesome. And I can tell you something. This is a bird that birders from all over the world come specifically to Pico Benito National Park to see. We've got a beautiful striped-tailed hummingbird over here. This is a bird that's very rare in Honduras, and in fact it only got onto the Pico Benito list a few years ago. They're very readily identifiable by their rufous wing patches on their shoulders and they've also got when they spread their tail they've got a nice stripe on the outer edges of their tail and in fact they're often confused with rufous tailed hummingbird because the underside of the tail is also rufous and when you see it flying you see that rufous color and you think immediately rufous tailed hummingbird well watch out because you could be lucky and find a striped-tailed hummingbird instead. This is a very rare hummingbird for Honduras, violet-headed hummingbird. It's also very unique because it's monotypic. It is the only species in its genus, and its genus name is Kleis. Really cool, violet-headed hummingbird. It's got a beautiful little white spot behind the eye. And it's quite a small hummingbird, hey? So in this moment, I'm going to show you one of the special owls that we have in Honduras. So I have a surprise for you. What is it? What type of owl? How I told you, it's a surprise. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> We got what these are screech owls, huh? Yes, vermiculated screech owls. Vermiculated screech owls. They're gorgeous. Look at that. How I told you, it's a beautiful surprise. Wow. It's one of the most difficult owls for to see in wow. whole Central America. Vermiculated screech owls. We've got two color morphs as well. There's a brown color morph sitting to the right and on the left is the grey colour morph, vermiculated screech owl. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. And as you can see, this is one of the owls that have green eyes, as you can see. Wow! That is spectacular. These are tiny little eared owls. They've got very prominent ear tufts and they're very, very aggressive. They've got these piercing eyes and they'll feed on small birds, little rodents, lizards. How did you find these? These owls, this species in particular, keep around flying and flying. So I was looking for from tree to tree and I finally find it here. Wow, that is magnificent. Gee, what a sighting. Well, this is the first birding by Tuk Tuk. Go. Thank you.
Honduras. We're all about you. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917. And by the Lodge at Pico Benito, Honduras Rainforest Eco Lodge and Spa. And sponsored in part by Manfrotto, complete solutions for photographers and videographers. Visit manfrotto.us. And by Pelagic Polarized Sunglasses. So this morning we're at Lionel's house. We're at about five and a half thousand feet in the cloud forest and we're going in search of resplendent Quetzal, having a quick breakfast prepared by Lionel and then we're going to head up very very steep incline for about an hour we're going to walk straight up and try and find the resplendent Quetzal. Lionel's dog wanted to come with us but uh, he had to get shooed back home. No dogs allowed with the resplendent. You know, Honduras has one of the highest rural populations in Central America. A lot of people living in these rural areas. And even at this altitude, right up at five and a half thousand feet, we've got quite intensively farmed slopes of the mountains here. And it's for this reason that the Honduran government has made every peak above a certain height a national park in the country. And that's very important for the protection of this iconic bird. Well, resplendent Quetzal does not make it easy. The altitude here, we're already feeling the effects and we've got to go higher and higher until we get to the spot where the resplendent Quetzal likes to hang out. Whew. But I tell you something, it is beautiful. We're looking back, we're right in the clouds here, right on the upper edges of the cloud line here. We're looking down into the valley, really beautiful. Such beautiful views from up here. We're looking down on Yohoa Lake and then to the right there, these rays coming through the mist, hitting the tops of the mountains. It's absolutely spectacular. Ah, oh, what are those raspberries? A huh. little bit of energy. Mmm. Mm, that's sweet. Real good. So, destination resplendent Quetzal is right up there. Here at Rock Jumper, we deal in the spectacular. From the iconic animals of Africa, to the bizarre birds of paradise in New Guinea, to the beaches of Brazil, to the grand state of Alaska, we help you reach your dream destinations. With over 300 tours to over 100 countries, Rock Jumper leads the pack in adventure travel, and we want to travel with you. We also specialize in private tours. If you have a group of friends you're traveling with, or want to see the seven natural wonders of the world with your family, contact us today. Our friendly, fun, professional guides excel in producing riveting wildlife experiences. That's why Rock Jumper's birding tours and wildlife safaris are so popular and we offer dazzling photographic tours and unique cultural trips too. Roll with Rock Jumper and see the world. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917 and by the Honduras Birding for Conservation Tour.
These resplendent Quetzals are named for an old Aztec word, Quetzal, meaning tall, upright feather. And they look as though they're this tall, upright, green feather. And that's how they got their name. Resplendent Quetzals were first discovered in 1832 by a Mexican ornithologist and naturalist called Pablo de la Llave. And he described this bird in Mexico and then it was found in other parts of Central America, always in the highlands. What a magnificent bird. They are sexually dimorphic, so the males look totally different from the females. Much redder on the belly, this bright iridescent green. And when they get into breeding plumage, those tail streamers can get to over two feet long. Those long, elegant tail streamers, and they'll use those to attract the females. And then they'll nest in a cavity in a tree. What spectacular birds. You know, I got up here and we've been waiting for hours and hours. And I remember looking for this bird in Costa Rica and really struggling for it as well. It's very unobtrusive and it often sits with its back to you. And I climbed right to the top of the mountain here and I found one of the birds in this tall gallery forest and it flew down and I just got a glimpse of it and then it went right to the top of a tree and I lost it and then it flew again and I think it was a female because it had kind of like a little bit of red on the belly but not a lot and it flew down and disappeared and I thought oh man that's it we're never going to get to see this bird. You know Lionel comes up here to this site this is where the birds come to feed habitually and he's seen six resplendent quetzals in this one tree feeding on the fruit. The Quetzal has a very, very important place in pre-Columbian Mesoamerican history. And, you know, the Aztec and the Maya, both those people, revere the Quetzal as the god of the sky. It holds a lot of importance to the people of this area, both in times gone past and now today, when hordes of ornithologists are flocking to places like Honduras to see this, arguably, one of the most beautiful birds in the world. Resplendent Quetzal, our golden bird for this episode.